Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I am Diana Piper. I'm the Director of Admissions and Marketing here at the Pathway School, and we're happy to have you with us. Thanks for taking time out of your evening to spend a little bit of time getting to know us. I wanted to just chat a little bit about the school, share some information, but before we get started, just take care of some housekeeping notes. First, let me put a little disclaimer out there. I have some notes so I don't talk too much endlessly and keep myself on track. So I apologize if I get a little bit distracted with my notes. So some housekeeping things. We will be coming to you live twice a month. The second Thursday of the month at noon and the fourth Tuesday of the month at seven o'clock just like this one is. And our topics between those monthly sessions, the Tuesday and Thursday session, will be similar but won't be the exact same thing. So I encourage you to go back and watch the video that we did, the Facebook Live that we did on the 18th. It'll have a little bit different information than what I'm gonna share with you today. I'm gonna to go into a little bit more depth with you tonight on some of the general information that I shared. So please feel free to go back and watch that. Love for you to share this with your friends and family and let them know that this is something that we're planning on doing so that if they would like to join us, there may be some others in your life that could really benefit from some of the information that we're gonna share. And we'd love for you to let them know what's happening so they can consider watching and joining us as well. If you have comments, don't hesitate to drop those questions in the comments and we will be happy to answer those throughout the evening. I have a fantastic colleague here, Devin, who is socially distanced from me and she's gonna monitor those comments and let me know what's coming in, what questions that we have. We'd also love you to tell us if you're watching us live or if you're replaying this Facebook Live video. It just gives us some good information. We like to know who's doing what. So thanks so much for joining. We will also make sure the uh, website, our website is in the comments. So don't hesitate to visit our website and learn a little bit more about us there. In the website, there is a place where you can ask for more information and ask somebody there to reach out and, and chat with you. So if you would like to ask some questions that are a little bit more sensitive or personal in nature and you don't wanna drop those today, then don't hesitate to look at our website, go to the information request feature and send us an email. Myself or my colleague in the admissions department will get in touch with you and make sure that we're answering those questions for you. You could also email us directly at enrollment at pathwayschool.org and we'll get back to you to let you know how we can set up a phone call and get some information to you. So tonight I wanna to talk a little bit about the history of the school and how it continues to drive our educational philosophy today. So Pathway has been serving students with special education needs for over 60 years now. That's a long time and we're so thankful to be able to be in this community serving such a wonderful student population and their families. Our, fo our founders recognized and appreciated that considering a student's full needs was necessary and vital in order to provide effective educational programming for them. So this led to an integration of education and clinical services that really collaborated towards a student's growth. We continue this concept today by having related service professionals such as speech and language pathologists, occupational therapy staff, clinical services, school psychologists and social workers, our reading specialists, our board certified behavior analysts and behavior interventionists, and of course, our school nurse. These professionals provide services to our students as needed. A lot of times they are going to be individual pull out services and sessions that they are working individually with students. And during that, they're providing a lot of direct instruction and real intense learning to help students overcome some challenges that they have and address the needs that they have. So just like students are in class and are learning addition and subtraction or decoding and reading comprehension skills, our related service professionals recognize and appreciate that 
students need to learn how to do things in those areas as well. So it could be something like um, learning how to slow down when you talk so that others can understand you or understand that you process information a little bit more slowly. So you might need to learn how to advocate for yourself to ask people to slow down and allow the wait time that you need while you process things that are being said to you, while you take those and figure out how you want to respond and then answer those good questions or provide a response in a good way. Sometimes it's helping students develop some sensory strategies so that when they are really nervous or, or anxious or just need to get some energy out that they have some sensory strategies that they can utilize. So all of those skills are practiced in a pull-out individual session with a professional where they learn and talk about how to use those things and practice them over and over again until they master those kinds of skills. Once they've mastered them, we understand that it's important to generalize those skills to other areas of their life. So sometimes it can be really easy to learn and apply a skill when you're one-on-one -on -one with a professional that you're working with. But once you get into the classroom and there's the distractions of the other students around you or the things on the wall or the work that's frustrating, sometimes all those great skills that you practiced and mastered in that individual session go out the window when you have to apply them in a real life situation. So after the skill has been practiced and mastered in an individual session, it's not uncommon for our professionals to push into the classroom during that next session and really help watch how a student applies those skills in the moment. Provide some gentle, subtle, very respectful guidance to students in the classroom because we don't want to humiliate anybody in the class and bring attention to them. So it's done in a very respectful and quiet, calm way so that professionals can remind students of the different strategies that they've learned and practiced throughout those sessions. The really great thing about having all of these professionals on our team is that they are easily accessible to our staff. So even students who don't have related services in any of these areas will benefit from our professionals who are phone call away and can answer a question a teacher has and maybe provide a suggestion for a strategy to use or offer to come in and do an informal observation that helps to understand if maybe an, an evaluation or assessment is necessary to see if that student could really benefit from the services. So it's really important for us to make sure that we are collaborating and really gathering all of the professional minds around a student to help them be successful. Our school serves students kindergarten through 12th grade. We have, and you'll see on our website, a couple of different descriptions of our programs. So we divide our programs up into what we, we call the Emotional Support Program, which serves students age kindergarten through the end of eighth grade. We have a lower school program that serves students kindergarten through eighth grade. And then we have an upper school program that supports students ninth grade through the age of 21. Now there's some differences between the lower school and the emotional support program in terms of the students in those programs, but some of the similarities between those programs are things like our lower school and our emotional support programs tend to be more self-contained. And what that means is that students are primarily having one or maybe two different teachers for their core academic subjects. We're limiting the amount of transitions that they're doing, so that they don't get as distracted and, and can really focus on the educational concepts that are being taught to them and really have the same kind, the same students and the same teachers for most of their academic day. That's different than our upper school students who have more of a traditional high school kind of experience in that they will change classes every 40 minutes and have a different subject and most times a different teacher for that subject. In addition to that, they may change buildings. So we have a 13 acre campus and several different buildings on that campus that students are gonna transition between
throughout the course of their educational day. And our high school students may, may be transitioning between buildings as well as classrooms through the, throughout the course of the day. Our lower school and emotional support students will leave their educational building for specials, the gym, go to the library, the art room, those kinds of things happen in a different building. So they will still tra travel through our campus and enjoy in, in the nice weather that we're having days like this, enjoy some time outside. All of our students are on what we refer to as a line of sight supervision, which means that no matter how old they are, we always know where they are and have our eyes on them just because we know it's important to sometimes catch when a kid gets a little bit distracted, might be engaged in a conversation with their classmate between classes for a little bit too long and we need to encourage them along to get to math because yes, math is important too. So we might need to do that a little bit so that's why we have a, a line of sight supervision to make sure that everybody is where they need to be. We have an extended school year program and I talked about this a little bit in the last live that we did. We have a six week long extended school year program and during that six weeks, students are coming to us for a full day program. So Monday through Friday from nine to three, the mornings are academically focused. So kids are having reading and math classes so they keep those skills fresh and they don't regress in those academic areas. The last thing we wanna do is start the school year having to review a whole bunch of stuff that they forgot over those summer months. So the ESY program allows us to keep those skills fresh. Then we have a lot of fun with kids. So there's a lot of different clubs that kids can sign up to participate in. So things like e-games or sports or master chef. We have a fashion and wearable technology club. Um, we have cooking, master chef classes, robotics and coding. And new to us this summer is gonna be an exciting class called hashtag adulting. So that class, that club is gonna focus on things like building a resume and a portfolio, uh, maybe learning how to take public transportation, all of the really important things, budgeting, money management, those kinds of things that are important in the adult world. So lots of fun happens. And in those clubs, we really get the opportunity to teach some skills like team building and communication, collaboration, compromise, all of those really important skills that everybody needs to know that aren't as easily taught in an English and a math class. You can do it some for sure, but it's much more appropriate in these club kind of opportunities where there is naturally that team building kind of environment and opportunity given to them. So lots of fun that happens throughout the course of the summer. We love to use our campus and the, the land that we have to have a good time outside. So sometimes it's a, a slip and slide. I, I saw that Chris Sullivan, uh, one of our, the, the sub head of our behavior interventionist is watching us live tonight and, and I have a picture of her enjoying our slip and slide. I think she's the one that introduced it to us a couple years ago. So lots of fun things that happen. We're really creative with what we're doing. If you are interested in exploring Pathway as an option and don't know where to start, I encourage you to visit our website and reach out to us with some information request emails. We're happy to get back to you and talk to you a little bit about the process and how you can talk with your school. We know that our school district partners are doing a great job of trying to provide programming for students that's appropriate and we absolutely respect the need to stay in the least restrictive environment and help kids stay in their home district as much as possible. So we wanna to talk to you about the opportunities that your school district can provide and make sure that you are talking with your school team about maybe some questions or concerns that you have about your child's education so that they can help problem solve those with you. Sometimes it's just as easy as a change of a class or maybe a change of a teacher or the addition of an intervention or a strategy that really could be the difference to help your child be more successful in the current environment. But if you don't think that that is the environment that's appropriate for them, then we encourage you to talk about options outside of the school district, such as approved private schools or other schools that could be appropriate. And we're happy to guide you through that process if the school agrees 
that they are not providing the appropriate program and that uh, they would be willing to consider a place like ours, then they will send us the referral and they will give you several different schools to consider as options and um, let you tour those schools, learn a little bit more. We realize that this is an important decision for you, so we wanna make sure that we're providing all the information that we can for you to get, make that good decision. We also strongly encourage you to visit all of the schools that the school suggests so that you can get a sense of what their options are and make sure that you are visiting and thinking about your child. You will always know them better than anybody else and it's important that you consider and visit all of the schools that are options so that you can make the best decision possible for yourself. So I'm gonna look to my colleague Devin and see if there's any questions that have come in as we try to wrap up this live session. Um, yes, yeah, so we have a, had a few questions. Um, can you kind of describe the process when someone is um, looking to bring their child to the school? Sure. Um, let's say that they put in an inquiry on our website and mm -hmm. then what happens? Sure, yeah, so it starts with that information request and certainly we can answer questions for you. As I've said, in most cases, we will want you to talk with your school district. If you are anticipating that the school district your child is currently involved in is gonna pay the tuition and provide the transportation to Pathway, then you certainly want to collaborate with them towards convincing them to consider Pathway as an option. Once they have agreed to that, they will send us some records, the education records to look at, and we will review those to think if to, to determine if we think our program is the appropriate option. And if that's the case, our education staff and other members of our team will also review that file to see what additional questions we have, see if we have room in the classroom that is appropriate for your child. And if all of that is the case, then we will schedule an intake meeting where we get to meet with you and your child get to know you both a little bit more, certainly answer last minute questions that you have about us so that you can make a good decision about the school that you'd like to select. And that gives us, we feel, the information that we need to give some recommendations. Are we the right school for you? And if the answer is yes, then we're happy to welcome you to our community. Certainly you have choice, so we know that you may be offered placement with us and other schools and have some last minute questions that you have of us so that you can make that decision. After acceptance is offered and you have decided that you want your child to come to Pathway, there's some enrollment paperwork that we have to work out. So there's always those first day of school forms that we have to fill out and get back before a student can join. And then certainly we collaborate with the school to make sure the transportation is set up and get those details ironed out so that your child can join. I hope that was helpful. Um, when can someone or when can a student enroll at Pathway? We have a rolling admissions, which means students will join us at any point during the year. Now there will become a time uh, later in the school year when we will make some decisions that say maybe the last couple weeks of school is not the best time to join but we are open to enrolling students at any point during the year. Certainly the best time for a new student to join us is during the ESY program where they can start to get to know the campus, maybe get to know some of their classmates and their, their new friends, get to know their teachers before the academic rigor of a school year begins, but we are open to accepting students at any point. So there is no too late to explore Pathway we will work with you at the point that that comes up. Okay, and then um, let's just do one more question. Great. Um, so if my child does not qualify for extended school year, mm -hmm. can, they, can they still come to Pathways program? Yeah, so that's a great question. And there are some times when students are not qualifying for ESY because the district uses their ESY determination and eligibility to determine if a student is eligible. So there have certainly been some times when we receive documents for a child and they were not eligible for ESY per the eligibility criteria of the school district. We strongly believe that an ESY program is beneficial for students. So we will certainly talk with you and with your school district professionals 
to see if, the, if they would reconsider extended school year eligibility for students. Our first choice would certainly be that the school district supports ESY and the student would be able to join us. If the school district is, is if the student is not eligible for ESY, you can certainly, students can uh, join our program for the summer and parents can pay privately for that if that's something that they select. So these have been great questions. Thanks so much for joining in today. I appreciate the time that you've spent with us tonight. Please feel free again to share this with others that you know who might benefit from this. Mark your calendars because we will be coming to you live the second Thursday of the month at noon, the fourth Tuesday of the month at seven o'clock, different topics. So if you have things you wanna learn and know more about, please feel free to drop those in the comments as well. We're open to exploring topics that you would like to hear and would be beneficial for you. So thanks so much for joining us, for letting me come into your home tonight for a little bit. I hope you have a great rest of the evening. The light's still, the sun's still out a little bit, so get out there and, and get some steps in before the, the dark night comes in. Thanks so much. Have a great night.